The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Welcome to it. Mondays here at Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Hope you do it all right. Hope you had a good weekend as you shake the cobwebs with that damn spring forward situation. But plenty of ball to talk. Nebraska basketball can exhale. Not take their foot off the gas by any means, but they can exhale an impressive win in Michigan yesterday. We're here to talk about that. The Husker women showed class, tenacity, and almost a second takedown of Iowa this year. We'll hear from Coach Amy Williams as it might have been a turning point uh, in the uh, the postseason uh, look for Nebraska women. Uh, now that they weren't in, but let's see what they do with this hurt, right? We'll get there. And uh, maybe he's mixing a little college football, some Nebraska thoughts here. As it is the offseason, but plenty of hoops. It is March. It is madness. And uh, Nebraska gets to put their feet up a bit. Uh, room for you today at 489-1240, as always, or 800-825-5865 with Hale Varsity Radio, powered by Cornhead Lager. We'll get the shout-out going here, the starting five, in just a moment. You're always welcome to watch the show, Hale Varsity YouTube. We stream it live. You hear it on the Hale Varsity Radio Network, different social media platforms, and on Twitter. You can catch the show live or replay it there. And uh, all, and uh, make sure you, you check out the podcast and the archived shows on YouTube as well, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play. We're mixing it up a bit uh, with uh, some of the guests today. One, Jay Moore will be with us here in about 15 minutes. We'll get Jay's take on his weekend and some thoughts around the NFL. Busy free agent soiree today with some of the who's who of NFL action, finding new landing spots. Jay's a big Nebraska basketball fan, so I'm sure he has a prognostication or two moving forward with the Big Ten tournament. We'll uh, we'll get his thoughts on some things there with Nebraska. And uh, in our two, Jake Mielheisen, going to be with us at 5. Uh, Jake, part of the Nebraska network, and, of course, with Kent Pavelka so many years. Both those guys have seen a ton of hoops. They've seen a great season and uh, we'll get Jake's thoughts on Nebraska moving forward. Uncle Charlie, Coach McBride, a Monday with Charlie. We will check in with Coach a little bit later on in the week as uh, Coach has some family in town, which is awesome, and uh, he's going to spend some time with the family, and we'll, uh, we'll check in with him hopefully for tomorrow with Coach McBride. You have the numbers. can email the show, Chris at HaleVarsity.com. And uh, Elijah, pretty good weekend, good weather. We're smiling about it. We love is the – calendar turns toward march we're halfway home and this is the 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 mood and the feel that you you've wrapped your arms around if you're a nebraska fan you remember them because they've they've been fleeting not to belabor it but it's been that that special that it's been so special for nebraska basketball fans to be at this moment because it hasn't happened every year or consecutive years since the danny knee era What you have now is a team that's firmly in, a team that's firmly safe. The thing to do now is just improve your seeding, and they have a chance to do that with the three seed. Uh, Likewise, with the Nebraska women, uh, they showed really well, four games, four days, and they took a, well, a national title favorite, if you're not counting South Carolina, to the the wire. They, They led by double digits most of the game. And just couldn't close it out. That was uh, that was frustrating. That was a little disheartening. But uh, Nebraska made uh, uh, well the rest of the state super proud yesterday. So a lot to get into there. And uh, Monty, our, our favorite Husker trucker, uh, is is offering me. He jumped in on Twitter a little bit earlier today. We had our conversation about oysters. Uh-huh. He uh, he has some oysters that he wants me to. To, to lock and load with, and Monty Selden, love you, Selden Trucking. Yum, yum, want me to bring you some of these. He's got some Harbor House seafood from Delaware. Fresh oysters, he's got a crate of them. And if we do them Rockefeller style, 
That means they're more baked than the fresh ones we had in Ireland. Maybe they'll taste a little better, a little different. We, we had this discussion with David Gustafson. How many oysters did you eat when you were in Charleston? Uh, Charleston's being flooded right now, so Gus and the baseball team has gotten out of town uh, a week earlier, thankfully. So that being said, uh, oysters, it's not grabbing you right now. No. No. Fire the grill up at 75, that's what you do. The one thing I can get behind is if you add enough hot sauce that they're more hot hot sauce than oyster. Sure. Because I could use that right now. I'm not sure if anyone else out there is susceptible to tree pollen, but it's been a brutal weekend for me in that regard. Mm -hmm. Uh, The seasonal allergies, I've been fighting them, but they've been winning. Uh, Just uh, to put it very simply, like tree pollen. Yeah, well, got, got hands. It's, it's kind of kicking my ass right now. <laughs> um, so I could use some hot sauce to, to clear up the sinuses, maybe soothe a sore throat. If hot sauce, I, if you I, believe I, that it will do that. My I'm wife's, not quite sure. My wife's been moody and unpleasant, but I, I'm going to count that as part of the pollen issue as well. Uh, it's been brutal. Mm. It, it's been absolutely brutal this weekend. Like, oh, you get an extra hour of sunlight. You get this beautiful weather. You go outside and you just can't you stop just sneezing. slapped in the face. Yeah, it, it was brutal. That was yesterday. I'm like, I'm going to go enjoy this weather. So I, I go go to a, a park that's by my house and go toss around a football. And not only do I throw my shoulder out, but I'm sneezing the whole time and just... Time to go sniffling. to a bar. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of the thought we had last night, too. Well, Brandon is in first. Uh, he says, what's up? Hope you're well. Brandon checks in one. Mike Corgan. And uh, Mike, love you. We're going to do an office space quote. Bob, looks like you've been missing a lot of work lately. Peter, uh, I wouldn't say I've been missing it, Bob. Uh, loved Office Space. <laughs> You've seen that, haven't you? Classic movie. As you like to roll your eyes. Of course I have seen it. Uh, Mr. Snitley, Jeff Snitley in it. Third part of the Boulder Peace Treaty. Uh, veggie, chill, and loving KG Kids for Life. In it four, Elijah, the other Elijah, uh, has a, a, a dad joke, as we say. Uh, he is in uh, at uh, at five. Justin checks in. Ronnie is in. Uh, Tim is right on. The Nebraska men and women looking solid and absolutely beyond so- solid there. Brando checks in. Anonymous is in. Good question from Anonymous. Will we make it to 25 wins? That's a candidate for question of the day. Uh, NASCAR Eric also checks in. And uh, we'll get more of your comments. So... The question of the day we have, is this the most fun you've had with a Nebraska basketball team? Think back as your fandom has grown whenever you jumped in and said, yep, I'm a Nebraska basketball fan. And we know the, uh, the, the misery. We know that it, it has been in that Chicago Cubs realm for a lot of you because it's the only team without a tournament win. Check your bingo box. Sorry, but we had to get that one out of the way. This team has been fun. And you know what? And I'm going to put this team, and there's still a lot of TBA, right? I'm going to put this team right behind. I'm going to put them behind 2013-2014. Nope, disagree. Okay. Disagree. I've been thinking about this one all day long. No, that, that, that's fine. Because and, and, well, well, in my lifetime, the the discussion right now, like best basketball team, Nebraska basketball team, I should add. I think that's a given. But of my lifetime is either that 13-14 squad or this year's the 2023-2024 squad. I'm not saying 13-14's better. I'm saying from a fun standpoint. And, and I had to think about that. I think there's a couple of games that – are stuck in your memory that make you think that season was more fun than it was on the road against Sparty. Yeah, absolutely. When Tram, uh, Tram Petaway goes off and Walt and Walt. Yeah. They both get hot from behind the three point range and you, you make the is own shut up. That was a fun one. You have no sit Sunday. Sparty was, was top one. St- Sparty was top 10 and, and Nebraska has two top 10 wins this year. So yeah. you're not wrong. I'm not taking away. What holds me back on that team is you forget how brutal it was to watch that team whenever Trent Petaway had an off game. Well, do we need to show some some road examples or evidence for this team? But the difference being with this team, you'll watch, they find themselves in a small hole, whatever. There's options. 
on the team that still keep you watching, give you a hope. You know what? Hey, maybe CJ Wilcher starts hitting some. Maybe Rink starts hitting some. Hey, Kisei can get hot at There's any point. There's still in time. hope if your ta- your top dude and, and is not available. You go back to 13 14. If Teran Petaway didn't have it going, was having an off game, your hope was like, well, maybe Siobhan Shields and Walter Pitchford can at least keep their, their get, head above get, water. Get Gallegos hot. Like, like, get him warm. There was guys that could maybe keep their head above water while you waited for Petaway to get it going. Mm. This team has guys that legitimately can lead you to a victory. If Kise doesn't have it going, hey, uh, CJ Wilcher time, hey, Bryce Williams time, hey, Rink Mass time. You know what? Sam Hoiber is going to make some effort plays off the bench and, and spark this team. It's more fun because there's more ways that this team can beat you, more reasons for you to watch. That's the one thing that, that you just forget about 13-14 is that if Petaway didn't have it going, that team, they weren't dead in the water, but they were really, really going to struggle to win basketball games. Whenever Terran Petaway had it going, that team was just as fun, if not more fun. But if he didn't have it going, there were some brutal stretches of that season. I think it swept under the rug because you think back, it's the most successful season Nebraska had in my lifetime until this year was that 13-14 season, so you remember it fondly. But there were some issues within that team that I think made it less fun than this team. And then you just add the characters that this team has and the joy that they show whenever they're out on the basketball floor. Combine all those things, I think this one's got to take the cake of the most fun Nebraska basketball team of my lifetime. And it's up there in terms of, across all sports, the most fun Nebraska team of my lifetime. I, for the life of me, and this isn't to dwell on the negative, it's a celebratory day, uh, a week from today, we'll find out where Nebraska is going, and who they're playing, and you can you can get your your dancing shoes on, and enjoy. That that has been well earned. Fred's as good as it gets. He's reinvented, and I think Nebraska fans appreciate that. Nebraska fans love this year's team because of how hard they play. And right now, you can love this team as a potential Cinderella because of what they're looking like right now. I mean, Nebraska basketball had a dude get teed up yesterday because he tossed some Michigan puke, <laughs> right? It got it got chippy, it got chirpy, and, you know, they, they have their back, so the chemistry is very real. And I love every candidate you have to have a double-digit game because – on a normal night, there's four, mm. which is great. And you're not wrong about Petaway and Walt and Gallegos and Siobhan because those guys, I would say, tolerated one another because they didn't tolerate one another very well with expectations the following year as they missed the tournament, and that team should have been a 25-win a team with what was coming back. They weren't. But I, I, I think of the – what does it for me was just how Nebraska – basketball Husker Nation just went off in a great way the following day after you beat Sparty mm. on the road top 10 Sparty and then you go get no sit Sunday with Sue in the front row and and just how bonkers that was is as intense as Purdue was and you smoked Purdue by by double digits this year you came back epic comeback against Wisconsin you've handled your business you've righted the ship on the road you have as many road wins as some of these other teams, i.e. Wisconsin, i.e. Michigan State this year. And listen, I, I just think that that Big Ten was a better Big Ten. I'm not, we're back into the, the better versus more fun, and, and that's not where I want to go. But I just think it was so unexpected for year two, year one at PBA, that it was just a party. And it really set a bar that, that Coach Miles couldn't reach again until – they were close in 18, but they didn't have the schedule or the wins in, in 2018 where they were a 22-win team left out of the Big Ten or left out of the NCAA tournament. So I go back to 14 because it was the first. Uh, this team has been fun, and I can't get Rutgers and Minnesota out of my mind. Mm. But Eric, to me, nails what my take is. And I think 13-14 may have had the more fun moments with no Sunday in Michigan State, but he nails it in my book. The roulette wheel of who is going to go off in any game. That's pretty good. This good team much more fun to watch. I agree with it. That that's he nails it. He said it better than I tried to, in my own words. It's the roulette wheel of who's going to go it's a off. Title. He, <laughs> that is actually the roulette wheel. I like that. Title by Eric by NASCAR Eric. But you, you sit back. You never know who's going to go off, and even if Nebraska is down in a basketball game, you have that thought in the back of your mind. You know what? Somebody's going to go off. Somebody 
is going to put this team on their back and somebody's going to carry them back into this basketball game. You didn't have that in 13-14. Every single game you have that with this team, that's what makes the totality of this season, I think, more fun. Whereas 13-14 with Sparty, with Wisconsin, may have had the better, the more fun individual moments. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, Anonymous, you nailed it. 91 was more fun until the miserable ending. Bo Reed still is frustrated with with that that Xavier game. Nebraska was a three seed. Totally get it. Totally get it. Uh, Dion said before me, I enjoy some enjoyed some Mo Iba and some Joe Cipriano. I, I think I was there in eighty five or eighty six. The Brian Carr era that was good. Uh, Moonbots right on the nineteen nineties college basketball was fun because you cheered for everyone. Arkansas had teams and characters. 40 minutes of hell. Mayberry, for sure, is what I remember. Corliss Williamson from Arkansas. Georgetown had Patrick Ewing, Kansas, Danny, and the Miracles. UNLV, basically the the top five uh, uh, and looked cool and fun. You had the Fab Five, which was remarkable. You had the Duke, Hayton, Disdain. Love those UNLV teams. They were they were fun. They were incredible. Their style was good. And I think this year, that's the other thing. We want to talk style. It was pretty free-flowing and and high TNT for that 2013-2014 team. This team does have a showman. It's got Kisei, who's going to launch from the Michigan M to drill a three (laughs) in the first seven minutes of the game. But it's been a fun year. Totally agree with that. Jay Moore's with us on the way. It's Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Lager. All-State, two-year starter, and rush in for the Big Red, and NFL vet. He's Dudeness or uh, Duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. It's Blackshirt, Jay Moore with Hale Varsity Radio. Jay's wrapping up his meeting, and then we will have Jay Moore. Yeah, I was like, I'm going to play the intro anyway. I love this intro. I love the intro. It's good. It's good. Nothing better than some Bruce, you know. We're going to have to ask. (laughs) Anonymous checks in on the stream. You're welcome to participate. Converse with the uh, other streamers slash uh, listeners on Hale Varsity Radio. Hale Varsity YouTube. Subscribe and like. So Anonymous says, Jay Moore gave a funny look to me and some friends a few weeks back when we each had three full glasses sitting in front of us. Sometimes the service is slow and you need to order ahead. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think Jay would be the type to judge you for that. I guess we'll find out. I think Jay was probably thinking about taking you three beers. <laughs> can, I, can I take Anonymous in a fight? <laughs> he was going to, 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 to use a swim move on all three of you and go, Doyle rules. Yeah, that funny look was plotting. That's what, that's what you saw. Uh, Jay saw three full beers. What are they going to do? <laughs> that's pretty good. Jay Moore is with us. Blackshirt Husker NFL are at Jay Moore 44 co-host Big Red Wrap-Up. Jay, I got to ask you this, and we, we just brought it up. Anonymous, who remains anonymous, a longtime listener in the stream, ran into you somewhere. And he says, Jay Moore gave a funny look to me and some friends a few weeks back when we each had three full glasses sitting in front of us. Sometimes the service is slow and you need to order ahead. Do you recall that moment passing judgment on on somebody and his buddies with three full beers while they're still drinking beers? Yes. Uh, No, I I, listen. It wasn't a funny look. It was almost like you're. That's genius. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a fun. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't a look of uh, disappointment or <laughs> casting judgment by any means. It was like you guys. This isn't your first rodeo, and uh, you know what the hell you're doing. And I was. And you know what? They shared too, so it was even better. They shared. Well, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, let's wait, back it up. If here. I recall, if I recall, um, this was uh, after the Penn State game a couple weekends ago. Okay. At a uh, local establishment in the Haymarket, or not Haymarket, in the in the rail yard. There, so there's two to pick from. Well, so. no free. 
No free shout outs. <laughs> oh, fair, fair. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Unless to they you... sponsor the Jay Moore segment and we'll let you. Uh... Oh, yeah. Yeah. What do, you, what do you mean by sharing? Were they passing these beers around? Was like, it a bucket? Everybody gets well, a there sip? Was like, there's probably six guys <laughs> hanging out um, at a table. It was, you know, um, at a high top table. And I was kind of reserving some seats for people um, that are coming, you know, leaving the game. And, uh, and I had, you know, talked to a few of the guys earlier before the game and, uh, we're just, you know, shooting the breeze, talking basketball, talking basketball, talking mm-hmm. just whatever it is. And they're like, Hey, you know, there's, I mean, they got, I think there was four or five guys there and there had to be, I don't know, 15 beers. <laughs> Anonymous. You're awesome. <laughs> That's so I think, good. I'm pretty sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've taken a lot of hits to the head. Uh, so, <laughs> judge me on, on this, but I'm, I've, uh, I'm pretty sure that's. I recall that that was just a few weeks ago. That was a hell of a day. No, uh, it was sure. so much fun. Um, I just those days where you're the day drinking, and um, <laughs> so uh, it's it was a blast. It's genius. We thought you might be going. Uh-huh, I'm going to take about three of these, and just <laughs> what are they going to do? <laughs> Has anyone ever moved in on a table when you're reserving one and say? No, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and box you out, so to speak. No one no one messes with you. Still, you're still in peak phys- peak physical condition. No, where you know, you've got twelve sacks a year. I think uh, I think uh, people use their uh, manners around me, so uh, they'll their peace. They mind their and uh, I you know I try I try to do the same to people. So I was just yeah you know, I was boxing people out. You know I was, those places are real. After the game gets over, I mean no, it is nuts. just it goes crazy. And I was just trying to box out for six seats. For people, and they even got out of the game a little early. But uh, that was, yeah, was was uh, going full uh, like, um, you know, Oakley with the Knicks type of deal, type of box out <laughs> um, on on trying to save people's seats. Jay, your take on on Nebraska basketball? They're in, they're comfortable. We're going to catch up with Jake Milheisen here in about uh, thirty minutes or so. So he's seen this this ride. Elijah and I question of the day. Is this the most fun Nebraska team you've followed? And I think they're fun. I think they're talented. I think they're a great group. I still I defer to the 2013-14 mm-hmm. era of of PBA. Well, year one of PBA, and uh, also the uh, just the, the kind of the, the real nice surprise, Clark, the 2014 turned out to be did you think this team had it in them to make the dance this year because they've been trending that way at least the 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 last couple of february's into march is the last two years despite the record not being great yeah i i didn't know what to expect you know the way the the year ended last year was obviously on a high note you know one of the i think you know they were top you know two or three you know how they finished you know february out in the big 10 last year you know, you have uh, Gary was out last year with a sh- uh, shoulder mm-hmm. injury. Um, you know, they had a few other injuries to that team last year, and that's kind of you saw Sam How- uh, Sam Hoiberg kind of get thrown into mm-hmm. it and um, get some great results. And but I just didn't know. You, you don't know with transfers. You know, you're bringing in Williams and Mast, and um, you, just, you just don't know what these guys are going to equate to. Yeah, they played at UNC Charlotte, and they played you know, and other other high level basketball you just don't know because the big tens its own animal so i just kind of wait and see and you saw some good things obviously early on and you know i I, you know the the game they play oregon state on oregon state wasn't it wasn't a great team but it's you know one of the first you know big time opponents they they play and you know they play well but then you have the creighton game you know and creighton shot the lights out they kind of bounce back um and you with some other non-conference games but then they go on and and lay an a against minnesota you're like oh sh- what's going on mm-hmm. here and then now it's like oh they they bounce back against michigan state at home like oh but then they go on the road and had the poor performance against rutgers and you're like oh but now it's just you you learned as the year went on how hard it was to win on the road uh you kind of discounted minnesota early in the year they were much more improved than they were last year uh, and you you look just at the play overall the high level play at home Obviously, you'd like to gotten some more road games and uh, went uh, road wins. Mm-hmm. You, I look at that Illinois game was easily gettable. You know, I think the Northwestern game was is what it is after the back to back overtime losses or overtime games. Um, so this team is just you. I don't know. I, 
you still hold your breath watching them. You don't want to get too ahead so there's of So there's still there's still trust issues for you. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I mean, being a bas- Nebraska basketball fan since I can remember. I mean, I remember, you know, when they won the Big 8 tournament in what 93, 94? 94. You know, I remember those times and how great it was, but then they go in as a 3 seed that same year and they they lose in the first round and you you think of all these teams that uh, have have showed so much promise during the season, but they can't get it done when it when it matters. Um, so I remember those teams, and obviously, it, the the decades of you know not being very competitive um, in the Big Twelve or even in the Big Ten. Um, so you you obviously you know want what's best, and and uh, but you've, we've been burned enough. But I think this team just shows you that. Uh, it doesn't have to be one guy every night. It, it's multiple, and that's the beauty of this team. It's whether it's Casey, whether it's Mass, whether it's Williams, Lawrence coming off the bench, CJ Wilter coming off the bench. Uh, you know, it, it, there's so many people can score and do so many things. And then you have the role guys, right? Then you have uh, just the, the Josiah Alex, the energy that he he brings, and the Sam Hoiberg, the energy he brings. So everyone has a role, and some in. You know, one one night it's it could be Casey's night. One night it could be could be Rink's night. One night it could be CJ's night. You know, Jamarcus Lawrence had his night in at Indiana. Uh, CJ had his night against Wisconsin. Uh, you know, Casey had you know he's had multiple nights. He's had a hell of a game against Michigan uh, yesterday. So there's fun. It's just fun to watch, and I think the maturity shows. It's an older team, so I think you know they don't get too far over their skis and obviously uh if any game was going to show that it would have probably been yesterday against Michigan that was an easy game that you could have stubbed your toe on and uh and end of the season very you know on not on the high note but they did secured a 3 seed now it's now you're kind of playing with house money now and you're just, uh go go and compete well in the Big 10 tournament and get yourself a nice seed in the in the in the NCAA tournament and somehow some way not feel that pressure to get this program's first tournament win. And that's kind of how I, you know, see and portray it. Jay, I'd love to get your thoughts here on NFL. Maybe we can keep you around for another segment if you're available. You give us a little overtime next segment, even a couple yeah, of minutes. Yeah, you get yeah, I can that work. But, but yeah. I want to wrap it up here with Husker basketball because you, you said a, a, a phrase that I think fits this team well. I mean, something we've talked about a lot, the trust issues. Could you not argue that the trust issues with this team have made it more fun? I mean, it was called a, a, a roulette wheel last who, time who around. Who are you dating, brother? No, and that's where I'm going. Like, like sometimes you see some couples on the outside looking in, and there's always drama in those couples that have the trust issues with each other, but that always keeps it kind of fun. No, it does <laughs> not. <laughs> From the outside looking in, maybe not for them. Yeah, the people <laughs> watch and say, "Oh, thank God I'm not them," yeah. right, Jay? <laughs> no, it's 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 stressful. You know, it's I mean, <laughs> even you know, yesterday the morning game and they're a six point favorite. You're just like, how how can they screw this up somehow? You're just you're just, you're <laughs> you know, it's it's just the way I but I like, think you know, and you prepare yourself because in you know. Sure as crap that Michigan starts off hot from the three and like here we go. You know Michigan's <laughs> one of the worst three point percentage you know shooter uh, teams in the conference, but you know they start out six of eight, whatever it was in the first half. Like here we go, they catch fire. But you also got to remind yourself that Michigan's one of the worst second half teams in the Big Ten, if not in nationally. So obviously things worked out, but you just always are trying to um, you just is in the back of your mind like how how can they you know get the wrong bounce mm-hmm. the other thing is too is it's so funny when you watch games is just they still talk like nebraska's on the bubble mm-hmm. you know as well and that's what's funny too it's it, this team is a three seed in the tournament and then as of yesterday they were still not talking confident confidently about them making the tournament so you're still like golly like anybody what else have, dude what any, we have to do anybody what else do? anybody else take the name off the jersey if you're a top three team with a double buy in your conference, you're not. And listen, but let's, let's you're you're in. But there's also there's also history attached well, to Nebraska or lack there. And there's also the other side of things, whereas the tr- the trust issue is not just with Husker fans with national media. If Purdue or Illinois was playing Michigan on the final game of the season, they wouldn't even turn that game. They'd check in at halftime and be like, "Oh, cool, we're up by 20. I guess I won't have to watch this one." Right. But Husker fans have to watch it because of the trust issues. I think that kind of I, I, underscores why Nebraska is still. Eight seed, nine seed, ten seed, quarter. I switched on the over late. The fact I switched over late to the Iowa Nebraska finish just to see can Michigan come back down seventeen with three left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Jay, hang tight. B- busy uh, free agent day in the NFL. We'll get Jay Moore's thoughts next. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Well, Veggie Chili Loving KG Kids for Life says, uh, is he playing hide and seek between the segments? We got the tour of the Jay Moore house. Uh, Moonbot says it's kind of creepy. At least he didn't drop it. Well, I was half expecting Jay to just post up in front of his toilet and take a pee. Just hold the laptop off camera. <laughs> just hear this. <laughs> didn't, didn't realize I was... Uh... The, the 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 stream went live still through break. Not was, not not audio, but video. <laughs> that's real time. That's well, my uh, you know I'm working from home uh, spring break, uh-huh. and uh, my wife's out of town for work. So my son popped his head in his room into my office and said, "Hey, Dad, I'm gonna go play." And I'm I have no idea where my kid is right now. So let's just put it that way. So I was walking around to see where the hell he went. <laughs> There's no sirens, are there? <laughs> <laughs> I have a good idea where he is. There's there's we live in a pretty fun neighborhood. There's a bunch of neighborhood kids, so they all just gather around, which is fine because he's been stuck in this house most of the day. Uh-huh. While I'm trying to get some stuff done for work. Duct taped to his desk. <laughs> I love it. Jay, at FL, it has uh, been a busy Monday as uh, Russell Wilson is off to Pittsburgh and Tomlin. Can he resurrect his career? I mean, he's had a great career, but he's had a tough end in Seattle. didn't work out in Denver. Does Pittsburgh get a new lease here? Finally, able to he'll have to compete and win the job, but he should do that. Tomlin's had to deal with a couple of whack jobs uh, in Pittsburgh, but mm-hmm. the point is, is uh, with Le'Veon and, and Brown, they did perform and produce for him. I'm not putting a, uh, I'm not putting Russ in that same category, but he's a he's kind of a my take from afar is a little bit of a different diva. Can he work and and, and flip Pittsburgh around? I don't know. It's, it's tough. I mean, there's some talent there. There's, I mean, Pittsburgh's had a great defense, uh, you know, with Pickens at wide receiver. Mm-hmm. I just don't – I don't know. I just He just plays it too safe anymore. He just doesn't – he doesn't let it rip, it seems like. And what made him so successful in Seattle, they had a fantastic running game, one of the best – a great offensive line, Marshawn – uh, Lynch was doing his thing. The, his ability to, to play action, get the bootlegs off of it, hit Jimmy, you know, not Jimmy, I mean. Um, Lock it. Yeah, yes. And I was thinking Jimmy, I mean, Jimmy Graham was there for a little bit, but I don't, sure. can't remember if they over, overlapped there at was, all. There was some overlap there. Yeah, so um, I just don't know if that's what they have. I mean, they have, you know, Steelers have a, a, a good, you know, running, uh, running game and Najee Harris being up there. And I just don't, I don't know. He's just gotten to that point where he just, I don't, the guy is just, I, he's just gotten a little too weird for me. I don't know. I just don't, I don't, what I saw the last couple of years with Denver, it just, it's so safe. It's doesn't, you know, doesn't want to put the ball down the field, I'm afraid to turn it over. I understand you have to have those aspects, but also there has to become a time where you, you gotta let that baby rip. Mm. Uh, and you got to try to make some, some something happen. I just don't know if, uh, if he has that left in him, I, I, I don't. I I think there's 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 a good mentor aspect that he could provide to a Kenny Pickett, but for him to come in there and say I'm gonna be the starter day one and we're gonna go ahead and win the AFC North and and get this thing going, I don't I don't think I don't I don't foresee that. Mm-hmm. I just he's uh, I'm not saying he's damaged. I just I just just don't see the same rust that was in Seattle mm-hmm. uh, playing in Super Bowls under Pete Carroll, you, you know, what, dang near 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. So they got to, uh, I don't know. I just don't, I don't, I guess I say I don't, I don't trust them to, to, to flip it that quickly. Okay. Well, the big upside for the Steelers is the Broncos are paying $38 million of his salary next year. So it's low risk potential, a uh, high yeah, reward for the Steelers. So, I understand why they make the move. The big news of the day, to Jay, is surprisingly in uh, running back free agent news. Saquon Barkley, he's off to the Eagles. Is that the final piece of that offense that could put it together and allow them to to make a run at the 49ers and make a run at the Super Bowl? you think Saquon Barkley could be that final difference maker in that offense? Um, better, Potentially. Better use him. Yeah, it, it, exactly. It's a, that's a... That's a 
nice duo, kind of one-two punch in that backfield. I just don't know. I mean, things with with Kelsey retiring and you know, and Cox retiring, they got to replace some key cogs within that within that uh, organization uh, that have played there at a high level for many many years. Uh, I think you, you just don't take those those two guys for you know lightly and how what how much they mean to that to that defense and to that offense. So, but getting a guy like that with Saquon there, it's it's amazing. The Giants, you know, you let them go to a to an NFC East uh, type of uh, uh, to an opponent, but that's what you get when you don't franchise them. So, um, it's, he's going to make them even better. I mean, that offense is already has tons of weapons in it. Uh, their defense was wasn't wasn't great this last year. Yeah, they struggled a little bit offensively. Plenty of uh, plenty of weapons, uh, and it's important to get the run game going. So, I, I you know, it's just they're going to be one of the top, you know top four teams uh, in NFC, kind of just like it was last year. It's just whether or not you get through the injuries and. Uh, you can make it get towards the end of the year and get in the playoffs and everyone's firing up, you know, at, at uh, all cylinders. And, yeah, can you hang with the 49ers when it comes down to it? How about Kirk Cousins? Uh, he is off to Hotlanta, winnable division. You got Robinson at running back, Drake London at wide receiver, Kyle Pitts, better than average offensive line. Defense has got to get worked on, but I love this for Atlanta. They were missing – someone that could take care of the ball. And I know Cousins has had his ups and downs with that in the postseason. But this is this is huge, and more so uh, for a locker room guy. I mean, it, he'll, he'll go produce with a ton of weapons. But, man, it seemed like Minnesota was in the hunt with him a lot of years, and I think this could be a great exclamation point in Atlanta with all that young talent around him. Yeah, it, it's a very interesting move. Um Again, Atlanta's getting you know some new coaching down there, and um, so I mean, I don't know how many options. I mean, at this point of his career, I'm not discounting Kirk Cousins at all. I think what he's done is in his career has been is really really well. I mean, the guy has gotten the most out of his Got his paid. ability and his talent. <laughs> um, but going on to Atlanta, I mean, again, it's again a, a mentor type of role in a guy that is. I mean, just from watching that quarterback, you know, on Netflix, the guy is, he is all business, man. Mm -hmm. He is, he practices the the right way. He's a great family man. So I think it's a guy you bring in when you're just, you're trying to clean up some things within your organization and and guys that are uh, good locker room guys. I just see that's what, that's Kirk Cousins role going forward with that, with with the Atlanta Falcons. They've got to grow up. I mean, Atlanta's got the talent. Last thought here, Jay, uh, you have Jacobs from Vegas to Green Bay. I love that. Uh, Derrick Henry sounds like he'll be headed to Baltimore. And uh, there's still some other shoes to drop here. But, you know, does, does that mean the, um, the, the draft this year is, it was going to be hot and heavy with quarterback anyway? But do you see maybe McCarthy ending up in, in San Francisco, I should say, in, in, uh, in Minnesota as a replacement? Yeah, that's, that'd be a really good landing spot, and just, I mean, I'm not a huge draft guy, but it's just it's things that you know you that pop up on social media, and mm. they've there's been some you know some they've liked them. Yeah, um, and he performed well at the combine and competed well, and uh, you know it's you're gonna the hand size and all those things that they have. It's those are just minor details, but his you know his ability to win. Is is obviously <laughs> what we saw the last couple of years is is right there. So I think he is uh, would be an excellent fit for that for that program. Jay, be good. We'll talk next week. Thanks again, bud. Yeah, we'll see you guys. And now, and now back to Hail Varsity Radio. Thanks for hanging out on a Monday. It's Hail Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Big thanks to Jay Moore. Some overtime with us. Both of Jay's segments can be found on the Hale Varsity uh, YouTube channel. Also can find them on the podcast page, Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, where you get your podcasts. Give us a rating. Tell us what you think. And always love the feedback, good, bad, or ugly. Reminder to get buckled up. Driving is a full-time job. Phones, food, and friends need your attention when you're not driving. Stop the distractions. Just drive. A message from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Back to that, how much fun has this year been? Is it the most fun Nebraska team you've cheered for? 
and uh, veli, veggie chili loving KG Kids for Life. What were the expectations of this team? And Justin below in the comments section, Hale Varsity YouTube channel says they were picked 12th uh, during the preseason. Those were really low, right? So not much was expected. If I'm not mistaken, I think this is why they are so fun. Well, Exceeding expectations. I think a better way to put it is that it was low expectations. It's Husker fans didn't want to get their hopes up and the media didn't Don't want to get be, hurt. And the, yeah, and the media didn't want to be the idiots that took this team that's been sub 500 uh, well under under Fred Hoiberg every single year that he's been here and picked them higher than that. I think a lot of people understood that the talent that Fred Hoiberg had put together this season was better talent than he'd ever had during his time at Nebraska. The question was, could he get them all playing together, playing cohesively and playing with his vision? And that was what remained to be seen. That's what we needed to have proven to us as this season went on. And I think uh, the even the, the the best case scenario for what this team could have been has been exceeded this year. That's been aided by the fact the Big Ten's been a little bit down. But I wouldn't say that people were expecting this team to be bad. People didn't want to get hurt again by this team because they accepted that there was a lot of talent on this team. But we'd seen a couple different times a lot of talent not be able to gel uh, during Fred's time at Nebraska. So you didn't want to be hurt again. So Moonbot7 says, look, boys, I want some hot takes. So uh, you have... Maybe not a real hot take, Moonbot. More of a more of an accurate projection. Maybe Dylan will be the first quarterback to start every game in X number of years. From an injury standpoint, yeah, I think you got to go back to ooh, wow Tanner Lee, don't you? Tanner Lee. But some were wishing that Tanner would have broken a fingernail, and maybe Tanner didn't throw a couple of pick sixes against G five opponents. Uh, more hot takes from Moonbot. Okay, Tommy Hill will get seven turnovers. Steve checks in. Uh, okay, uh, if Big O, that's uh, the polar bears chasing Chris, he would run a four five forty. Chris, <laughs> folks, I don't know about that. I don't know one. about that either. I wouldn't. I would not. Um, if I'm on a scooter, perhaps. If I'm on a scooter, perhaps. If uh, here's my hot take for the day, Moonbot Seven. If uh, Sterling Schmidt decides to have explosive diarrhea in his kennel a third straight day, Sterling Schmidt will be up for adoption Thursday morning. Oh. Yeah, puppies suck. Yeah. You're, 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 there's, you've, I think, gotten to like light at the end of the tunnel portion of, of puppy, though. Right? He's at the uh, VET right now. Mama took him. That's not euthanasia, correct? No. <laughs> Dude, he's two weeks. have had him for three weeks. <laughs> Sorry about your dog, Schmidt. <laughs> My God. No. But if he keeps going potty, you're going to get a for sale sign around his neck. Hour two, Jake Milheisen coming up. Husker Hoops on Hale Varsity. The voice of Husker Nation is on the air. This is Hale Varsity Radio. Insight, opinion, expertise, along with the biggest names talking Nebraska sports. Join in with the show at 402-489-1240 or 1-800-825-5865. Now, here are your hosts, Chris Schmidt and Elijah Herbel. Back into it, it's our two, it's Hale Varsity. We're powered by Cornhead Lager as soon as... Elijah walked into the studio. He's handed me coasters, but I don't. I don't have a beer. Uh, Elijah, that's all right. Jake Milheisen smiling ear to ear. Standout Huskers, standout Southeast Knight. Part of the Nebraska broadcast team's done color analysis for a number of years with the Big Red. Jake, what color are your dancing shoes? Oh, I, I told I told Kent Schmidt on on Sunday after the Michigan to polish his off, but. You know, I'm gonna have to go with some nice shiny red ones this year. How about that? I think so. I mean, and the uh, the styles that that Adidas has out there. I mean, half the dudes on Nebraska have some sort of red or red slash black configuration. So, uh, I think uh, are you are you a a good uh, rug cutter, as they say? Absolutely not. My kids make fun of me all the time, but I think I think that I'm good, but I know that I'm not. <laughs> so are you in the Elaine uh, Seinfeld bracket? Is, let me ask that. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm Elaine Bennett for sure. <laughs> uh, Jake Mielheisen's with us. Uh, Jake, uh, let's talk yesterday and your thoughts, your read on the squad. 
going in, and then of course eighty to eighty five to seventy, uh, pretty much beat down. I mean, Kise did Kise things, and everyone else looked really locked in. Yeah, I mean, you, you go to that game. You obviously had a week off and you know, try to heal uh, both physically and mentally. And I was, you know, I was nervous before the game just because you just don't know what Michigan's going to do if they're going to hit a bunch of threes, and they did early on, but. Um, you're right, Kay, they played, I mean, he had 23 points that first half and kind of carried us with that seven-point lead at halftime. But I think what this team has done and has proven is just they, they hang their hats on, on defense. And I, th- I think they turned a lot of a defense into offense on Sunday. And then offensively, you know, we kind of have things clicking and we're playing inside out like we did. We weren't just settling for threes. Mm-hmm. I mean, this team is dangerous. And, and we don't have that – we don't have that one – you know, go-to guy on a given night. We've got four or five guys that can really step up offensively, and um, we, we we put a good performance on Sunday. Did what we did to, needed to do, took care of business, and have some momentum going into postseason play. Jake, your concern level when Michigan jumped out eight to two was what? Because sitting on my couch watching the game, <laughs> it ratcheted up pretty significantly. It was it was definitely high, just because you know you know everybody disses on Michigan that they're not very good, but they're a team that averages eight three the game. They made their first. I think they started off four for four, and you go, oh, no, here's what, this is what's going to happen. They're going to make 23s against us and, and play their best game of the year. But I was my, my anxiety level was on high alert at that point. Amen, because we're watching this like, oh, my God, it's another team that's going to go off from three. But, Jake, Nebraska didn't blink. They settled in, and they, they answered clearly from, from three-point land. But, hell, you guys shot 70% in the first half. You got – 25 plus points in the paint. I mean, you, you, you really did work it inside out. It was really smart basketball. It, it was. And, and it wasn't just, and I know KJ okay, got it going, but, you know, those came off of off of Nebraska really establishing the paint. And, and I thought Rake Mass did a really good job. Josiah Alec played well inside. Juwan Gary had some good takes. But, you know, when we start sharing the ball and, and, playing, and playing good team basketball like we have been all, all year, I mean, the opposing team's defense, they have a tough time figuring out who they really want to lock into. And Michigan, you know, they tried uh, mixing up defenses. They went zone. They went man. They did the, uh, the three-quarter 2-2-1 two, two, press just to mix it up. But we were patient, and we got some really good looks. Even in the second half, I think we went on a three-and-a-half-minute stretch. We didn't make a field goal, but we got really high-quality looks and got to the free-throw line. So when we're doing that offensively, sharing the ball and just making the – well, I, and Kent and I have talked a lot about it where I just say make the simple play. Don't try to do too much, and that's what these guys do. And they, it showed yesterday. It was just fun to watch. Jake, as we begin looking ahead to the Big Ten tournament, obviously Nebraska is going to have another couple days off. Where I'm sure going to have that discussion of rust versus rest on the show over the next couple days. But I want to get your thoughts on momentum headed into the tournament. Obviously, yesterday was a step in the right direction in that regard. But do you think this team is, quote-unquote, clicking at the right time? I, I really do, Elijah, where we won six of our last seven, and really we could have won that one we lost at Ohio State. We just didn't didn't play our best, and, and Ohio State played really well. But I think we have some momentum going into, into postseason play. And, you know, I liked having the week off last week. I like having, you know, four or five days off this week just because, you know, this group it has been talked about time and time again where we have the oldest roster in the Big Ten where they're experienced. And I think, you know, I – I think we had a really cohesive group where, in practice, they're locked in. They're 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 not going to take a, a break and have that deep sigh. Okay, we we did what we need to do and and come in um, feeling good about themselves. I think they have a little bit of chip on their shoulder as well, where they want to prove themselves and keep this momentum going, win some games in the Big Ten tournament, and then hopefully get our uh, our first elusive uh, tournament win. Jake Milleisen with us, Hale Varsity Radio, part of Husker Basketball, stand out for the Big Red, uh, stand out at Lincoln Southeast, and uh, on the broadcast with Kent, at Jake Mule on Twitter is where you can follow Jake. You guys have entertained listeners all season long with passion and insight, and it's been a, a magical season. We talked about this in in hour one, and you being as, as big a part in Nebraska basketball, Jake, as you've been, where does this season rank to you as far as that, that fun meter? Has this been the most fun either as a fan or, or covering this team like you have? If you look back to, I don't know, even 2014 or, or some of the teams you watched growing up that I watched growing up with, with Coach Nee, and I want to 
put this team into the equation from that uh, that enjoyment level. There's been some heartbreak and some head scratch, yes, but they've really kind of emerged uh, this time of year as a different team. They've gotten better as the year has gone on. Yeah, they, they really have. And I think, you know, for me, this has been the most fun uh, with me being involved calling games. I mean, Ken and I, we've had a blast. I mean, there's been some been a some, uh, few down games, but, I mean, it's been as, as much fun as, as he and I have had uh, broadcasting. I think it, I think just with the, how they play, mm-hmm. and I go back to all the, you look at how packed PBA has been. That's because these Husker fans love how hard they play. We're physical. We get nasty on the defensive end, and we have guys coming off the bench, you know, like Sam Hoiberg and, and Jamarcus Lawrence now where they provide that energy, that physicality, and, and we just get after it. And that's what I love about this team where, you know, some, I think some teams in years past, you go back to those Danny Nieras, those are obviously really talented teams. And I, you know, growing up here in Lincoln, went to the Danny Center and watched all those games and loved watching them. But this team is just, they're, they may not be as talented, but they, they are cohesive. I know that sounds cliche, but they play well together. They play hard. And I just like the, the fact that they're not afraid to get their hands dirty. And um, the defensive side, that's their identity. But we're also super talented on the offensive end. And with KZ and Bryce Williams and Rink Mast, we can score a variety of ways. And it just looks like they're having a ton of fun playing. I think, you know, they've continued to improve this entire year and they're playing their best basketball right now. Jake, whenever we talk about how fun this team is, I mean, there's guys on this team that are super fun to watch, whether you're a Nebraska basketball fan or not. I mean, the Big Ten country loves Kisei, at least whenever Nebraska is not playing their favorite team. And I want to get your take here on the next couple of weeks. What are the chances you think that Nebraska could become America's darling in the NCAA tournament? Obviously, you have to win a couple of games, and that's a big test first. But I think Husker fans can see how fun this team is. I think there's a chance America could see how fun this team is. I, I completely agree where – there's always a team or two or three every year when it comes to March Madness where, you know, the nation kind of figures it out and falls in love with a specific team. And if we can somehow win game one, then I think that we, that we have a chance to become that team. And I think, you know, KZ is one of those guys that if he was playing against it, you'd probably, um, you probably wouldn't like him very much, but obviously Husker nation, we love having on our team and he, he just plays with just so much joy. And I, you know, I've got two young daughters and, and every kid in Lincoln absolutely loves him. That's that's they want to get his autograph. They want to go watch him play. And I think America will want to do the same thing. And then it's not only KZ though either, but it's 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 Juwan Geary, it's Bryce Williams, it's it's Josiah Alec, and we just play the right way. And I really do think that these guys like each other. They they have fun playing, and it shows. And that's why I think if we can somehow get that win, that first round win. Then I do. I think I think America will really cheer for Nebraska. Jake Mulehuizens with his tail Varsity Radio at Jake Mule on Twitter, uh, part of the uh, Husker broadcast team. Of course, him and Ken Pavelka uh, taking you through March. And uh, you know, we we think of those Cinderella teams, right? I mean, think of the. Uh, George Mason run. Uh, this was with Larinaga 100 years ago. Or Florida Gulf Coast with Dunk U or Dunk City. Loyola Marymount, Jake, for you and I, uh, 100 years ago, 200 years ago with Bo, right. with, uh, with Bo Kimball, right? And then even Northwestern, uh, back to the Seinfeld reference with Elaine in the stands, <laughs> when, when, <laughs> when Collins got that first run. Nebraska could absolutely wear the slipper, but they're not a – pat him on the head nice story I, I do believe the the blue collar part of this basketball team Jake take me back to when things really flipped you've been around Fred during his tenure and it's it's a different acquisition mindset with who they're getting and, and grabbing out of the portal and also on the recruiting trail from high school and this team's toughened up and it really kind of started to me with Derek and Sam uh, last year, they really poured the concrete, but Fred had to, to make adjustments here to get to this point, didn't he? Oh, he absolutely did. And I think, I think they changed their recruiting a little bit where, you know, originally I think they just went and got the best talent available, mm-hmm. whether it's fit or not, which, you know, that, that can work in certain uh, circumstances. But when they flipped and they got Sam Greasel and Derek Walker and Vandemel uh, and Jawan Gary last year, I think that was a complete culture flip where it was no longer about me. It was about the team. And again, I know that sounds, you know, the sports cliche, but that's the, that's the truth. And they really bought in to just the, 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 the team mindset. I think, 
you do. You have to really give uh, a lot of credit to, to Fred, and then you have to give a lot of credit to Sam Riesel and to Derek Walker. They were, they were the two guys that were really the catalyst. If you remember, we won we won the most games in the Big Ten Conference in February and March last year, and that carried over to this year, and it set the it set the tone for this twenty three twenty four season. So I think they started to recruit not only talented guys, but the right character guys and guys that fit the right pieces for what Fred wanted to do on both ends of the floor. And I think the culture shift is so well exemplified by that story that came out a couple weeks ago that not a single guy has been late to practice this season. Uh, what, what a remarkable culture shift from where this program was at three years ago. You're wondering, I mean, if guys even wanted to be there on game days sometimes, now you look at this team where <laughs> everyone just plays with so much passion they're not even late to practice. Like, I don't think... I know of anybody who's never been late to something in a year-long stretch, but this Husker basketball team is, has done that. I think that's, that's super impressive and really indicative of the culture flip that's happened. Yeah, I think that's a great point. It sounds, I mean, when you say that, it sounds kind of stupid. Like, why would you be late to practice? But, I mean, we've all been late to, to, to meetings, to work, whatever it may be. Because you and... can. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes you just try, oh, there's a train today. Oh, man, I'm going to be late. <laughs> exactly. So it's, so it's just to have that. But that, that, just, that just shows that it's a great example of what this team in the locker room is like. And I, mean, I even go back, uh, a friend and I were talking the other day, one of the most important games of this year that probably no one talks about was the North Dakota game at home because we were down – I think we were down 14 or 18 with 18 minutes to go in that second half. And, you know, the teams in the past, um, you know, the last 15 years probably would have lost that game. But instead, this team was able to flip the switch and get that win at home. I know North Dakota is not very good, but, you know, there, there a lot of teams in the Big Ten lost that game before a holiday break where, you know, you have Northwestern lose to Chicago State. So I think that just speaks to the culture of the locker room and, and Elijah, where, where guys are just showing up on time and wanting to be there. You hear him on the Husker broadcast. It's Jake Muehlheisen with us here on Hale Varsity Radio talking Nebraska basketball. And Jake, before we get you out of here, I want to zoom in and specifically focus on the Big Ten tournament. What can this Husker team accomplish in your eyes in the Big Ten tournament? I think they can do you know something similar to what the, the women's team did. What they what the women's team did was awesome. I mean, obviously they had to play four four games in four days, but. Um, they kind of they kind of set the blueprint for uh, for our team heading into this week, and obviously we have we're either going to play Michigan, Penn State, or Indiana. Um, more than likely, either Penn State or or the Hoosiers, where you know we've beaten uh, Penn State and Indiana twice. Now Indiana scares me a little bit just because uh, they've won four or five straight heading to the tournament. Uh, they're playing some pretty good ball, and it's hard to beat a team three times. But at the same time, you know we've shown that we can beat them at home and on the road. And then Penn State, the same way. They're a dangerous team. They like to press a lot. But I think our chances in that first game are pretty good. Jake, seeding. Let's talk seeding. If Nebraska ends up at a 10, there's a, a shot to be at CHI. What do you think is the appropriate seed as we go into the tournament right now? Where would you, Jake Mielheisen, have Nebraska pegged? A 10, a 9, an 8 better? What do you think? I think as we sit here and talk today, I think we're we should be an eight seed. Uh, that's just that's just my opinion. I might be a little biased, obviously, but you know if we win a game or two in the Big Ten, I think that bumps us to a seven. I really okay. do. I think it should. You know, I, it, it still kind of uh, makes me scratch my head a little bit. Where you know we split with Wisconsin, we are the the third or the th- third seed in the Big Ten, but yet they're still predicted as a six seed. Mm-hmm. So that just—I know they had a tougher schedule, so I, I get that 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 side of the desk as well. But I, do, I think we should be an eight seed, um, and I I do kind of hope though that we're a seven seed, so we have that have that chance to play in Omaha. Because you're right, where if we somehow get that draw, I mean that place would be crazy. And and when we, I'm going to say when we win that first game, that second game will be just bananas there and the whole state will shut down to watch Nebraska. How cool would it be to win that first game on Creighton's home floor? <laughs> oh, man, that would be sweet, wouldn't it? I think that would be awesome. That'd be all right. And uh, we will uh, pester you as this uh, this dance and run continues. Jay, keep it rolling, bud. We'll uh, be watching and listening for sure as you guys uh, head to the Big Ten tournament. Thanks for a few minutes today. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I, I hope you're I hope you're pastoring me for about three or four more weeks. Well, we will. <laughs> we do. Oh God, it's Schmidt. Uh, ignore, ignore. Uh, Jake, you take care, bud. All right, thanks, guys. 
Hail Varsity Radio is live. Now, back to Schmitty. Schmitty's a great guy, but he don't have a brain. And Elijah. You want me to speak? When I point you, yeah. On Hail Varsity Radio. Back with you. Great to get caught up with Big Jake. Jake Mielheisen, part of the Nebraska basketball broadcast. Ken Pavelka. Good intel and insight and uh, all hopes and dreams alive as Nebraska heads off to the Big Ten Tournament. Friday night affair. We're going to have to tip a glass and hunker in for that uh, double buy and uh, watch it play out. Nebraska 5-0 and against potential opponents. And uh, the other side of that bracket, uh, maybe a re- revenge game against Illinois. Iowa is uh, a pain in the neck. They were a pain in the neck yesterday. And uh, we'll hear from Coach Williams here in a little bit. But uh, Moonbot 7 got things launched on the stream. Hail Varsity YouTube. You're invited to watch the show that way. You can hear us, of course, radio-wise across the Hail Varsity Radio Network. But he wanted some hot takes, man. He wanted the, the, the wheels to start turning. And, you know, I, I've got a couple of, of hot takes and maybe – they're not as, as flaming hot as Stephen A. or Mr. Skip, but the uh, <laughs> or Stevens. The fact that if uh, Polar Bear was chasing me, I'd run a four five forty. Uh, I have not been blessed with speed nor agility. Uh, there you go. So, two of my hot takes. One, I think this bitterness that Nebraska women basketball women's basketball team are, are is tasting right now really spurns and spawns them on in the NCAA tournament not just a, an opening round win i think with their talent level with how well they shoot it with the fact they got Markowski down low my hot take is Nebraska women at a minimum get to the Sweet 16. Now, there was a run 10, 12 years ago where Nebraska got to the Sweet 16 as a, I think they were a one seed or a two seed, and uh, they were unbeaten. Now, this was in the old Big 12. But no, I, I like Coach Williams' team. I love the, the hurt. I love the emotion that they are going to carry with them. And I think they're going to use that as fuel and take it out. I think it's a a, a turning point, uh, big time pivot where it's one thing to to come back and have PBA at your back, Elijah, to go beat Caitlin Clark in Iowa, which you shouldn't scoff at. Nebraska to to have a chance to be two and one against Iowa this year, they end up one and two. But Iowa's a national championship caliber squad. They're going to be a one seed. So the fact that Nebraska was there, they led, and they couldn't finish, and I, I think there's about two minutes and change where there was a, a three. They went for the kill. They missed. Clark got a three, and it was a five- to six-point swing the other way, and Nebraska didn't back down. They can look in the mirror and say, hey, man, we were as good yesterday as Iowa. We just didn't have enough in the, uh, the end of regulation, didn't love the shot, although – Iowa figured a way to play some defense, and then in overtime, Nebraska battled back. I think Nebraska women are good enough to be a Sweet 16 team. Whatever their seeding is, if they end up at sneaking in as a seven, great. If they're an eight, uh, you worry because then you got to run into a one run seed. seed. But but what if it's a rematch against Iowa? What if it is a spot out west where they could get a team or two that are future Big Ten teams that have had nights off. And I'm not super well-versed in women's basketball, but I think Nebraska can, can go toe-to-toe with a lot. I mean, South Carolina is off the table, <laughs> okay, for about everybody. Uh, and But no, that, that's one of my hot takes. My second hot take at Moonbot's request, Thomas Fedoni will be receiving Big Ten, all Big Ten honors as tight end. That's first or second team. Okay. Not, it's a hot take. It's it's March, but I was reading Sammy McEwen's story. Uh, he sat down with Satterfield, and Nebraska wants to be in a world where, listen, they they can go to a three tight end personnel, a one three personnel, and that's what Harbaugh did at Stanford. We killed people with Andrew Luck and company. 
uh, that's what he built into with Michigan. And Nebraska has some options, but you have a an offensive coordinator that is now not dealing with quarterbacks. You have an offensive coordinator that they have a quarterback coach in Glenn Thomas that will get quarterbacks competent in a passing game. I think Nebraska's tight end options this year are great. They're going to try and do two to three tight end sets. That's the ultimate mismatch from an offense to a defense is whatever body type and athletes you have at tight end, right? Get him matched up on somebody unless you've got a bunch of hybrid defenders in your back pocket. I think Fedoni could go nuts. And if your position coach slash offensive coordinator gets to see you every day, I think you could you could have the offense centered around tight end usage. That's where Nebraska wants to go. So that's my math on it. But I just think Fedoni's ready to explode. Amazing player and talent. I think he gets to that level of what was projected from him. I like that hot take. I'm not gonna gonna specifically lock in here and say a player. I'm gonna be broad here. But you need to tell me Nebraska's going bowling. No, 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 no. That <laughs> that, that shouldn't be a hot take. My hot no, I know. take. I know. I'm kidding. And this among certain Husker circles might not be a hot take. I think if you were to talk to some people who cover the grander Big Ten or maybe some people that are in the national media, it might be a hot take more for them. I think Nebraska will have multiple first-team All-Big Ten honorees next year. I'm not going to lock in any names, but I think you have candidates, probably three of them on that defensive side of the ball, in Nash, sure. Ty, and probably Tommy Hill. I'll add Deshaun Singleton to that list. And then you look at some guys that could make some sophomore year leaps and Cam Linhart and, and Prince Will. Mm-hmm as being a lot of candidates on that defensive side of the ball. I don't think all those guys end up as all Big Ten honorees. That'd be very difficult to do. But I think Nebraska will have multiple first-team all Big Ten players next season. Maybe not unanimous between coaches and media, but I'll just say multiple all uh, first-team all Big Ten players next year. I think there's too many candidates for them to all strike out next season, if you will. What, what does Nebraska need number-wise to be – in contention for a Big Ten Big Ten championship, six? It's probably over four. Three on offense. Say it's what are your offensive linemen? Say it's Banks at wide receiver. Say it's Fedoni. Maybe it's the second offensive line. And defensively, you've got Nash and Ty. And I what, love Deshaun Singleton. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see I how think he looks he's great. knee injury, but I think he's got all Big Ten caliber written all over him. He's phenomenal, and, and he's that hybrid guy that are guys that can guard dudes like Fedoni. And, and then Tommy Hill with the interceptions as well on the back mm-hmm. end, with what he did at the end of the year, could potentially, if he can keep that up, have some eye popping numbers in terms of turnovers next season. I like the hot take that was posed by. Uh, now I got to go check my. Justin picture. checks in. He says Williams, James Williams, the sack leader. For next season for Nebraska it, football. It was Moombot who said he thinks Tommy Hill gets seven turnovers. Okay. I, I, I think that's a, a fair hot take based on what we saw at the end of, of Hill's season last mm-hmm. year. I think seven's still a high number, which makes it a hot take, but I like that in terms of your odds. More from Justin. Hot take. Nebraska beats Creighton in the Elite Eight to make the Final Four. Oh, that's a hot take. <laughs> that'd be hilarious. That'd be, that'd be funny. Poetic justice. Uh, Brandon, if Nebraska wins... Do they get a four to a five seed? They could probably move up to a five, I think. Seven's as high as I'm going to go this year, and that's if they get to the final or if they bow out in the semis. That's that's where I'm at. Um, you know, I don't know that Nebraska got I, – uh, I don't know. I like the Illinois – on the men's side, I like a chance to, to get Illinois again. I love the fact that they're 5-0. and oh. That can work both ways, again, for or against you. I, I think Nebraska matches up well with Indiana as well as Indiana's played. Mm-hmm. Penn State, to me, just is physical and, la- and gangly, and they're a lot like Rutgers. So I don't, I don't like... Penn State in Nebraska. I mean, well, I would avoid Penn State. You look at Penn State where they play at home, they're used to playing in front of nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, so that could be advantage Penn State in the Big Ten tournament whenever you have quiet crowds. How many Nebraska fans are going? Well, I mean, do you see how many Indy. Husker fans ended up in Minneapolis on Sunday for that Big Ten championship sure. game? It's not an awful roadie. No, well, it's, it's I mean, uh, Iowa Russ and I made the decision after about 
four cocktails on a Friday night. Want to go to the Big Ten title game? Sure. So we, we, we did, and it's painless. Well, especially with the late game on Friday. Mm-hmm. I think you could see some Husker fans take a half day at work on Friday, make the roadie. Are you suggesting something? Oh, now that's an idea, Schmitty. Do we want to go? Well, here's <laughs> here's the question. I mean, we're, we're, we're well past the old media request thing. So, and it's going to be played, Where where's it at? In, I mean, is it, are they playing it at Lucas Oil? Or are they playing it at Market Square? Or whatever the hell it's called now. Because it's in Indy, right? Is it in Minneapolis? Well, they just had... Minneapolis. The, okay, so it is Minneapolis again. Yeah, Target Center. Okay, so it is Target Center. It's not quite across the street at the Williams Arena like the old graduate. I don't know. You want to check uh, hotel prices? We should go buy tickets? Yeah, I, yeah probably. We're going to sneak in? Well, I think we could work some magic and probably get set up uh, where we set up for our mini uh, Minnesota-Nebraska roadies mm-hmm. downtown for, for, um, for, for the Nebraska-Minnesota game. We have to figure out a producer for Friday, given that... <laughs> That Connor Who's going to put on us on the there. air? You know? My family was also set to celebrate my birthday this weekend, but it's my birthday, so if I delay it, like, <laughs> can't say anything. <laughs> That's funny. Steven says, uh, Oscar quarterback will have 20 touchdown passes this year. Ooh, I like this. Purdue or the field for the Big Ten tournament from Brandon? Ooh. And... That's an interesting question. I'm going to go Purdue. Purdue's out for blood this year, man. I'll probably also go with Purdue. Whenever you have the National Player of the Year on your squad, it's hard to bet against that. Okay. I'll check flights during the commercial break. Well, I think we, after your morning show wraps up, I think we realistically could make it there before this show gets going. Sure. Well, that's how I did it. I flew. I missed Husker Volleyball Day. <laughs> Matthew, with the voice of reason for our checkbooks... You two are bad luck. <laughs> you need to stay in Lincoln. All right, fair enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, that's, that's probably the most accurate response we'll, yet. We'll meet in Havelock. Actually, we should, we should talk to our friends at the Herdat Sports Bar and Grill. Ooh. Watch party up there. Because it's a 9 o'clock tip. It's late, yeah. yeah. Done. If they don't have things booked. Watch party at Schmitty's house. We can all come meet the pup. <laughs> Come take the pup. I uh, got a vet update that no one wants to hear. <laughs> we'll roll forward on a Monday with Hale Varsity Radio. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. Just got the email from uh, Iowa Russ. He is half, he has to travel to the left coast. Otherwise, he would have joined us in, uh, in many Friday. Trying to think. This Friday. Do we just save it up? Go hit second round NCAA tournament? Well, my mother did call yesterday and asked if I wanted to go to the final four. Because it's in Chandler, Arizona. Mm-hmm. It's like 15 minutes from Joe Mama's pad. Are you, uh, that, are you that confident in Nebraska? No, I'm just saying I would like to go to the final four <laughs> <laughs> and do a show from the final four. Uh, and uh, I would drive to Lincoln Friday. Can I get a couch to sleep on? So Brandon is is in. Uh, this is probably off the board, Steve, but uh, does Nebraska's tight end coach get a DUI again? Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, wow. No is, is the answer. Uh, don't, don't count your chickens before they're hatched. It's- I'm fairly certain that, that there, there's probably a n- no. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. Uh, Nebraska gets a punt return for a touchdown. That's also a bold one. Yeah. (laughs) Nebraska has positive punt return yards. They'll find somebody. They have to, right? Right? I mean, hell, DeWan Gross can still get it done. Well, see, that's one. He has some eligibility. How many times have we said the punt return game, well, it can't get worse next year, and it somehow managed to get worse? I know. Yeah, well, and, and not Steve's also there. reminding us of how we were like all over, all over, like the tight end one-two punch. 
last year yeah. with Gilbert mm-hmm. and Fedoni. Now Fedoni wasn't bad. They just well, need to, they just need to give him the football. Th- that's a, there's a reason that these are called hot takes at yes. this point in the year because plenty will the change tape will be burned. August. Your memory may keep uh, reminding us. Here come December third of, of our hot takes back on March eleventh. Yeah. But there'll be no evidence, mind you. There'll be no evidence. We know we make bad takes every single year. That comes with the job of being in radio. Uh We're sometimes the biggest idiots out there. You just circle the smart, called this, I called this. Yeah, and the ones that you miss, you never talk about. Dude, we we all but pinotted Cranach. Because as soon as the the very next morning that Raiola committed to Georgia... Crane acts like, dude, it ain't over. <laughs> it's not over. It's like, Crane act, really? And we remember that take, but we also... Well, we still like put him on a pedestal for it. I love it. Well, how about the other side of Crane act saying, Talia to Nebraska, when Talia entered the transfer, or before he entered the transfer portal, but then he doesn't have any eligibility left, and also Nebraska's never going to... Well, but he though, he's two for two on those. He did call that Talia was going into the portal, yeah. so I'll give him that. He didn't get the destination, right, considering Talia did not get that NCAA waiver. But No, I mean, usually a letter and a firm talking to by Nick Saban uh, results in, in much better. But anyway, that's, that's kind of the, the point of, of, of radio mm-hmm. is you circle the great takes, you forget about the bad takes until mm-hmm. Stephen reminds you. Well, here's a, a really good take from Amy Williams yesterday. Cut one, Huskers almost get it done against Iowa. This is heart-wrenching and, and just... A super disappointing loss in overtime here. Our kids came here expecting to win, and nobody else really probably believed that we would even be in the championship game, much less um, have a chance to win it, but we believed. And our locker room believed, our our, our whole team believed, and um, I'm so proud of the contributions we got from our entire roster this entire tournament, and I am proud of the classy group of champions that compete the way they do that we have here at Nebraska. My brother had an incredible hot take on Twitter yesterday when it comes to Caitlin Clark in, in Iowa. And, and he went, she's not a good role model. And his take on that is because of her language and her attitude, her bravado. And I think... While she may not be a lot of people's cup of tea, that her, when it comes to interactions, her one-on-one interactions with young basketball fans, I think that is superseding. Now, there there has been stories on social media where um, somebody went out to shoot in the driveway, whether this is fake or not. They're 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 bla- they're dropping f yes every three they hit because they saw Caitlin do it. <laughs> She probably, I'm not going to tell someone to dial back their language. You just need to have a chat with your kid that Caitlin gets uh, to use different words when on the court versus in front of the microphone. Wow. Now, their, their, their head coach was kind of a clown show after the Nebraska game. Oh, yeah. But, like, do we say the same thing about LeBron James? Never LeBron James gets angry at a referee to call him a bad role model. No, it, it, well, there. you shouldn't be a double standard. I mean, is there is there, oh, LeBron's a, a bad teammate or a bad role model because he dropped an F-bomb in celebration after hitting a game-winning shot? Like, I'm not with that. I, I, don't, I don't think so either. I think the folks that have been around Clark for years in the AAU circuit and played against her – Growing up, uh, have a have a different take on Clark as far as what kind of teammate she is. Maybe she's grown up since then, but she's incredible. I mean, she she's drawing drawing millions and millions of people who wouldn't have given a second thought to women's and, basketball. And here local, I mean, how many girls within the state of Nebraska within the Midwest are going to be playing basketball moving because forward of because of Caitlin Clark? For because sure, what they saw she put together, how she put the world on notice. Mm-hmm. I mean, similar to how Husker volleyball has raised a generation of volleyball sure. players within the state of Nebraska. Caitlin Clark could have that same effect in Iowa and across the Midwest. So I, I have no problem. Well, and I, I mean, think this this Nebraska basketball team, this women's team, may have that same effect. Not yeah. only did they they beat Caitlin, but they have put a a solid run together, and they're a really good. They're really really talented. They're they're incredibly talented. Here's Alexis Markowski. We'll talk with Proud Papa Andy tomorrow to get things settled for the uh, Big Ten tournament. 
but cut five here as Nebraska took Iowa to the brink. I mean, not only did we take them to overtime, like we played a whole another game. This is our fourth game. This is their third. Um, we're just fighters. Um, you know, they'll go on a run and we just come back. Um, I don't know. We just are playing really well together. People are stepping up, making huge plays for each other. And um, I wouldn't want to be a part of any other program. Last thought and cut from Amy Williams here. Uh, the message to the team moving forward here for the tournament. Yeah, I think right now I'm just going to let them um, feel the moment um, and, and really kind of soak this up. Um, it's okay um, for them to, to have some time to, to really be disappointed because they put their heart and souls on the line up here and nobody else did, but we expected to win. And, um, and so when you fall short of that, that's okay. You know, we, with four games to go in the regular season, we had a little picture that put us in the double by bracket and we cut it into a four piece puzzle and we had four games left and we said let's put all four pieces of that puzzle together and we fell a little short at Illinois against a really really veteran um, tough team on the road and we we spent a lot of time as a team talking about how do you respond when you set goals for yourself and they don't happen you just reset and find new goals to go after and that's exactly what we will eventually get to Amy is setting new goals for our team we feel like we are incredibly poised to make a run in the next tournament and um, and it's going to take every single soul on our team given just what they did up here in the Big Ten tournament. And now, and now back to Hale Varsity Radio. Back with you, it's Hale Varsity, powered by Cornhead Logger, Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Hope you're doing all right. And uh, plenty of hoops today, a little hot take magic mixed in as well. Tomorrow on the show, we'll check in with Michael Bruns from 24 7 Sports. We'll hear from Andy Markowski, Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, and then Mitch Sherman. Going to be with us from The Athletic. Big thanks to Jay Moore today. Big thanks to Jake Mielheisen as uh, he joined us part of Nebraska basketball, the broadcast, and uh, him and Kent uh, bringing you the, the magic this season and uh, plenty to, uh, to look forward to as uh, Nebraska uh, has a, a chance to do some special things beyond just uh, the 22 wins. But you're feeling pretty good. You've got a, a birthday coming up. Yes, I do. Which is, which is glorious. But we were talking about the dog and the vet, and you had a story you need to share about how uh, your dad's cat. A beloved cat. Had to go. Yeah, so my dad had a, a, a cat, and I think, I can't remember where I've told the story before. I don't think it was on this show, but apologies if you're out there and you've heard this story before. It's a great, great story. Um, my dad had a, a cat his whole dorm floor did in college, actually, that they just kind of found and took in. The cat's name uh, was Fubar, which if you come from a military background or if you have anyone in there, you would know what that means. Uh, look it up if you don't know what it means, unless you are a child. Do not look it up. Um, but essentially, the cat fit that mantra. It was an ugly street cat. It had been through hell. They had no idea how old it was. They took it in. School year ends. Nobody wants this cat. My dad steps up to the plate, takes on the cat, and he... Lived with this cat from graduating college uh, to uh, marrying my mom, moving off to California. Heard some great stories about this cat and how much it hated being in its kennel all the way out to California on a road trip, which uh, really got things started off poorly. But my brother is born out in California, and um, during this time when my brother's an infant, this cat is getting older in health, and it continues urinating on the carpet downstairs mm. in their, their brand new home out in California. And uh, the quote from my mother, which I've heard this time and time again from my father, was, um, if I find pee on this carpet one more time, that cat's getting put down. And uh, not in a, a, a retribution way. And this cat's health is failing. It's probably only got a little bit of time left. It's being a real annoyance here. We're going to put it out of its misery. Um, and the next day, my mom finds urine on the carpet, not from the cat, but from my brother, who was an infant at the time. And lo and behold, the cat still gets taken into the vet and gets put down. And my, my dad's never, never forgotten that moment of my brother peeing on the carpet and the cat taking the blame and getting put down. 
So uh, that's rest, so funny. Rest in peace, Fubar. Rest in peace, my mother as that, well. But that's that's wonderful with the uh, the, the, the 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 brother blaming the cat. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, no, a lot of a lot of great memories of old Fubar. Seventy, uh, hundred and seventy bucks later, and and uh, the the puppy now has antibiotics. Has not been put down, luckily. No. Wow. <laughs> you hear what the guys were talking talking about putting down puppies on the show? <laughs> no, nope. Uh, Sterling, I'm sure we'll see him tonight because we'll be uh, taping an average Joe Sports Show podcast. Yes, we will. That'll be good. Dolman's on spring break down in Florida. But I'm glad you did put those rumors to rest. Of there's no Michael Vicks in here. No, Puppies. there there are, there are not. They uh, that was a low blow. It's okay. <laughs> uh, I know it's been a big day for Atlanta, but way to drag them bra- back down uh, from their NFL uh, happiness. Back at four tomorrow with Hale City, powered by Cornhead Lager. Thanks.